What's up, nerdlings? What's up, nerdlings? Do you sleepily nerd for <laughs> tremendous things? This is April O'Neil, Channel 6 News, and you're watching Do You Nerd? Welcome back, nerdlings. I am Tom. I'm Lady Lacey. We are tired. We are also Do You Nerd, a variety channel of uh, celebrating all the things that we nerd out about, all of our passions, including going to conventions like the local one, Tremendicon. This is is a three-day convention. Which is why we're tired. <laughs> and it is focused primarily on creators in the creative space. Their mantra of education, inspiration, encouragement, collaboration, charity, this is not your run-of-the-mill convention. Generally, what do you see at conventions like all the time? You see just booth after booth after booth of things that you know you can buy either at Amazon or Timu or just at any other random mill convention or paying hundreds of dollars for celebrity autographs or pictures and stuff like that. Yeah, if that's what you like, cool. You know, those conventions mm -hmm. are still fun. What makes Tremendicon so great and really sets it apart is its focus on that creative spin of things. Something that we heard a lot over our weekend there was uh, people talking about their networking with others, like-minded creative mm -hmm. people. They're learning like new tips and tricks and stuff. They're learning from them. And that's what I really liked hearing because it's like that really encompasses the message that Tremendicon is sending yes. with their convention. Yes. And they don't necessarily go the celebrity route, but they do bring in special guests that are notable and have neat accolades behind them. But their booths, whether it's pottery, leather, yeah. just jewelry, food, anything just creative. It's not stuff you can find anywhere else, which exactly. is what's amazing about this convention. And honestly, that's what we like about it because we kind of just collect what we love anyway, exactly. which is usually stuff that isn't run in the mill all the time. <laughs> now with three days, wow, their book, their schedule book, there's a lot of information in here. Now it does have maps, it does have a schedule, and it talks about the, the guests, it talks about the makers tracks and everything. We did have one little nitpick on some of the the layouts of the book basically we kind of found it a little confusing because what they did was they broke everything down into rooms versus time frames so you go to the maui room or the bora bora room and then they have friday stuff saturday stuff sunday stuff broken down by the hours which is great if you know what room you're going to but if you're just pulling up this thing and you just want to say hey what's going on at two o'clock right now it does get a little confusing because you've got to look at each room and then decide what you'd like. We prefer that's like basically Friday listing the time down and then what's going on at that exact time and then what room it's in. Because you can look at a map and figure out where the room is. So that's my only gripe about that. Right. And in all honesty, it may be a nitpicky thing because <laughs> it could just be us. We yeah. are of the older variety of nerd. <laughs> so maybe stuff like that works out better for us. But we are curious to know, anyone, if you've dealt with conventions that do a layout like this, let us know in the comments below, which do you think works better? Because that kind of feedback always helps conventions. Yeah. The other thing that we would have liked to have seen in this was that, though I believe on their social network pages, they did post some pictures of some of the things available for the makers tracks. I don't recall specifically if their website did, but I think it would have been cool if they threw some pictures in here of the things that you could yeah. make. As you go through the list of the makers th tracks, there was not pictures of what you were making. I really do feel like that would sell it a lot better because there were some things that I was like, I don't know what that is. I don't want to buy that. I don't want to make that. But then after I saw what it was made, I was like, oh, I would have totally made that if I'd known what it looked like. I do think that where you're purchasing your tickets for the makers tracks, having a picture of the end product would really, really sell those classes. And again, maybe it's just a nitpick yeah. thing from a couple of old nerds <laughs> yeah. because we're old school and we like that. But sometimes pictures, you know, can speak a lot more volumes than words and everything. So it could be like an impulse. Oh, yeah. I see that. Yes. Sign me <laughs> up. Now, aside from the vendors and the tables of all that really cool, unique, creative stuff there. And of course, the artists, the writers, the cosplayers that you could talk to. There was a ton going on. That big thick schedule book is really going to help you yes. when you go to Tremendicon because we're talking like rooms with tabletop gaming tournaments going on. So this is your chance to really bust out your board game skills. But there were trivia rooms. Oh yeah. It, Star Trek, Disney, and Star that's the Wars. Cool thing too. I mean like the, all kinds of trivia rooms. The Disney one was so much fun because 
it's it's a great test. It's like, oh, you think you know you're Disney? Uh, good luck going up against Princess Jazz. <laughs> I'll make a man out of you. He said Jackie Chan, but uh, he does, but he sings a dub for it, or the Cantonese version of it. Donny Osmond sings the English one. Yeah, like I said, push the actual glasses up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a big nerd. <laughs> there was also tons of panels on whether it was comic books, writing, drawing, it did not matter. It was always kind of hard to catch anybody at their table because they were always off doing that panels. That is true. Which is amazing. That is not a complaint whatsoever. Those are amazing and informative and fun and just constantly going. You could literally be there all day long and barely spend any time in the in the vendor's room just because you're going to all these tracks. You know, not only are you <laughs> going to be there all day long, but you're going to be there all night long too because of Tremenda Prom. We were robbed, by the way. Uh, yeah, you know, come on, king and queen right here. No, yeah, no. totally. <laughs> Artemis, as prom queen, do you have any statement that you would like to give? Everyone gets to have four day work week and free stuff on the weekend. I love this idea. I love this plan. The the illustrious inaugural prom king. Do you have a statement for us? Sup? Just kidding. All joking aside, we did come away with a fantastic 360. We did. Degree that was so much video fun. Video photo op. That's that's fantastic. I love but yeah, that. we had so much fun at the prom. There was a VIP dinner you could purchase tickets to ahead of time which is a really nice dinner and then after dinner we all got to go on the dance floor and dance to some amazing klingon pop music <laughs> that was so much <laughs> fun you know sometimes conventions will have like uh an after party you know like a dance party or mm -hmm. maybe a concert or something Tremenda prom it's again one of those things that's like really different it's it's spinning things on its edge it's like yep. how can we do something that not every other convention is doing not only that, look, you can go to a prom and still have fun. It's, yeah. it's no different than a dance party or a concert. You know, go by yourself, go with your friends, just go and have a good time. But what a great way for, you know, a couple of nerds who like to turn any instance into a date yep. whenever they can to make it into a date. So not only did we get a convention, but we had a nice little date night yeah, too. Yeah, but this time you don't have to go to prom with the football and cheerleaders. You get to go with fellow nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Every instinct is telling me to put this in my mouth. I um, don't know if your balls work. should be glowing. Yeah, I think you've got some uh, illness. You might. Uh... So I'm just doing this before you start eating, but uh, just to brag, we are having dinner with a really Klingon, Klingon hot princess. So <laughs> not only was the prom fun, but uh, as soon as you go through the doors, you got little goodie bags. Fun little swag bags for yeah. the VIPs. And look at all of the fun stuff that they threw in there. Not just candy, but just some just adorable, fun, little goofy things. And if you're doing prom in the dark, who doesn't love light up stuff? And again, coming off the tail end of the Tremenda Prom, listening to the Pop Warrior, we had to get some of her stuff. Yeah, so of course we got a, a uh, koozie because I love to keep my hands not so cold. And she had three albums available at the convention. So we did pick up all three of those. And she was sweet enough, even in a Klingon way, <laughs> to <laughs> sign all of those. I am not going to try to read any I, of I these. No, no, I would not. Even though we took a Klingon class with her, I'm still not comfortable talking about it. May your blood scream. So that's Ulij, Ulij Jatshaj. Top me doon, bo me doon. Great deeds, great songs. Kapla. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh. The stickers Emote for stickers. magnets. Yep, perfect. How adorable are those? She did say she might be coming out with a Christmas album. So Ooh. I'm looking forward to some Klingon Christmas songs. Ooh. I don't know any Klingon to try to start singing Jingle Bells right now, or else I would have. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, a wrong 
was finally righted. I feel so much better now. <laughs> the first year of Tremendicon, we got to chat with uh, Adam McLaughlin with Stranger Thingies about his fantastic miniature work. What did you fall in love with? That is the Taylor. banana dog. What did you still fall in love with this year? The banana dog. What did he promise to bring you at a Ren Fair, but he did not? The banana dog. What? What do you have at long last? A banana dog. <laughs> and you don't just have a dog. No, either. I don't just got the banana dog. I got the banana wizard too. These are great. They Man, are hilarious. I, I love all of his little banana figures anyway, but all of his miniatures. Yes. He mm -hmm. does an amazing job getting them, printing them, painting them, and I don't know. And I just I just had to have a banana throwing fire. And, and then my cute little doggy. Here's a fun little aside. Do you even use these in I your do tabletop not. gaming? <laughs> I you do not. You just love miniatures. I just love miniatures and collecting them because they're small like me. And I believe he had a maker's track there. For he a did. I think too, he had so. a couple maker's track yeah. there. He was teaching you how to paint these, which is amazing because they are very tiny. I could never do that because it would kill my hands. <laughs> <laughs> these are too small. Well, well, well. Broken dreams and promises. What? Once upon a time, the fair lady wanted a banana dog, and someone said he would be at Dragon Fest. Oh, he knows, he knows, he knows. Wow, wow. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> Something I can do with my hands, though, are read some comics. We had a great time talking to and checking out the booth of Big Dog Inc. First of all, uh, look at these really nice freebie comics that we have here. So Critter, this looks really neat. We, we really like the artwork and the coloring of these. That's initially what drew us to his booth to begin with. Mm -hmm. Right here, oh no, I'm going to mess this up. Shahrazad. Did, did I, how did I do I think you did better than I could. <laughs> it's like an Asian cultural vibe going on here. Samurais, fun stuff like that. The Ursa Minor comic, it's starting off a little gruesome. Some ghosts, some so it blood. It's a little horror comic y, kind of fun. But it's really showing that even when things get a little darker, those colors pop. Mm hmm. And I loved getting a freebie for this The Legend of Oz, The Wicked West. This is what drew me in. Mm -hmm. So much so, in fact, that I had to get Volume 1. I mean, we love our trade paperbacks. We do, anyway. yes, because it's always easier to have the collected works in it. You love anything Wizard of Oz. And to throw do. a Western theme on that is just so yeah. much fun. How cool. I mean, you take <laughs> an established franchise series formula and give it this awesome twist. Plus, you back it up with this amazing art. This is going to be so much fun to check out. Yes, and, and there uh, were six trade books. And I think that he said the seventh one is not quite in a trade yet. It was individual, I'm, but he, they were coming out in a trade. I'm gonna have to get caught up sometime yes, you soon. Are. And I wasn't the only one that picked no, up something No, I picked there. me out these Goth Day um, issue one and two. So I just was really, actually what drew me was Goth Day number two, that mermaid. She was just really, really pretty. And so looking through the art on the inside, I really wanted it. And then you pointed out, well, it's number two, get number one. So I did. He had this great promotion where he was offering up some swag for everything that you bought. So not only did we get a trading card, but some stickers. That will become magnets. And we also bought one of these uh, little swag bag things. Look at all of the great stuff in this. I believe he said this was a Kickstarter thing. Yeah, I think it was so, like a reward for Kickstarters or Kickstarter itself, something like that. With that initially being the only way that you could get this with him having some for sale, I couldn't pass it up. Also, how fantastic is that? I'll be ready in five minutes. I, I, I never lie when I say that. Are, are you, what, what constitutes as five minutes to you? Anyway, I better go. Uh, <laughs> so, on the comic front, there was a table giving out some free comics. We love the What If series. And this, Mr. Sinister. What if Mr. Sinister formed the X-Men? These are not to your father's superheroes. Indeed. Look at Jean Grey there. Oh, yeah. She's going full Goblin Queen. <laughs> and, of course, you know, on that note and the big dog stuff, speaking of something that might be a little not safe for work. It's covered up. It's okay. Brink and Fetch want to have fun. This was something that we had to pick up from the table of David Fought. 
who had sadly passed away, I believe two years now. And as much as that sucks, I really appreciate the people that keep his memory alive, not only with the art contest that was going on at Tremendicon, but by bringing his stuff out for collectors to purchase and add to their own collections, including these uh, great little stickers. The Rainbow Girl stickers looked great. What did we say we were going we to do? We said, hey, them? we're turning those into magnets. That's awesome. And then what did she tell us? That was a good idea, because here you go. Here's some magnets. <laughs> yeah. The work's already been done for us. Easy peasy. Wait, wait, wait. What's something this one picks up from every convention? Let me, let me hear you guys say it. Yay! That's right, plushie. Uh-huh. You know me. And I picked, I adopted, actually, this adorable little handmade dragon. It was so cute. I really, one, he's one of my favorite colors, but what really drew me to him is his slight imperfections. He's slightly a little, little lopsided with his ears and his wings are just, you know, he's got character to him. He is really well made, well stitched. It's nice and thick, tight stitching and everything. He's, he's just got his beautiful little face. I love him to death, my little baby dragon. And he's even got a tiny little friend with him too, if he so chooses. Yes, at another booth, they were making handmade dragons that just kind of sit there and he is just adorable. He's got that like starry kind of pattern to him and he, he was just, he was just adorable. I love it. There's something about like how almost squish he is yeah. too. It's so charming because it feels like, not that you'd want to because you'd smush him more. You can almost use him like a bookmark. Kinda, yeah. I mean, but I wouldn't do that because I'd squish him. <laughs> and if you can't find the perfect dragon companion, what should you do? You should make one, which is what I did. I did a my own maker's track with the lovely Heather After cosplay, and I made my own dragon that you can wear around on your wrist. And that's exactly what I did for the majority of the convention. I wore him on my wrist, but yeah, I, I stuffed him, I glued him together, I picked out his coloring, and I have a beautiful dragon keepsake that I can always remember because I made this guy. And you got some compliments about I that I did, afterwards. I got a lot of compliments on him. People thought he was really adorable and really cute. Plus that class was full. There were a lot of people there in there making was, dragons. Yes. It and was it, a perfect It was a craft. great class and it, it didn't really take all that much time to do. And I mean, it was just, it was so much fun. I will definitely be doing another one of these again. Well, I made something too. Holy cow, guys. Oh my gosh. And boy, did he put this together. It was literally piece, 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 and he glued it all together, put it all together. It's amazing. And uh, it is hefty, too. I love how this looks. I love how it feels. I mean, all of the detail to it is fantastic. The handle, it just feels right. But you know what? I'm not going to go too much into detail about this because this may be its own little video. Just saying. an awesome Maker's Track by Ye old Laser Smith. But if you didn't feel like making something, you could just buy something from him. Which I did. I bought this amazing dragon deck holder. So pop open the leather, Rawr, look at that fire, and then you just put your, your card games, card decks in there, and they're safe, keep them safe. I think that's really cool. There's a lot of detail on there. The coloring is mm -hmm. really great. That little addition of the leather strap too, every bit of it comes together yes. so nicely the thing that i actually really do like about it is when you open it up he could have just left the part that's holding your card decks by itself but the fact that he colored it and etched fire flames on it just to give us that extra touch is really awesome yes you know what else is awesome far out treats man Candy. oh freeze dried skittles yes i have to admit i'm i'm not much of a skittles i don't like fan. skittles either they don't like the yeah, weird, the texture is texture. weird. The texture is all weird. But these, oh my gosh. It makes them crunchy. <laughs> they're crunchy, like they have that crunch and then they almost like dissolve and then mm -hmm. they're super flavorful like a Skittle. Yes, we love buying from this lady. We've gotten quite a few different treats from her. Oh, she has some amazing <laughs> stuff. And I think she has some amazing stuff on the horizon. So check out that link down below to see what she has coming up next. A great venue for conventions is finding out about new stores new people obviously yes. such as uh nowhere's store of forgotten lore whenever it's a brand new store yeah. and this is kind of their introduction to the community mm -hmm. 
this is a perfect place to do that. They were there explaining of what they do in their store, which they do actually teach you how to play tabletop games. They do have beginner courses for Magic the Gathering and other card deck building games. And if you don't have people to play those with, they host it so that you can come in and just play with random people in there, which is amazing. Yeah, they had that huge focus on community, yes. which like you said, that's amazing. That's exactly what yes. you want. I learned that apparently there's a Final Fantasy <laughs> deck building card game out there. Why didn't anyone tell me hey, about this? Look where it can go. I, where what can go? Oh, well, I picked up a couple of packs. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm probably not going to play the game. I just wanted the cards because the ones that they had spread out on the table were pretty cool. Wouldn't be the first time we bought something and not played the game, right? Exactly. <laughs> just because we want uh, the figures or the cards or whatever. <laughs> what, what do you think, nerdlings? Should we open these? Uh, yeah. I'm just kidding. Of course we're going to open them. Now, something that I really like about these cards, I mean, they're nice, high-quality cards. They have almost a uh, kind of like a matte finish for the art mm. side, but then on the reverse side, there's a texture to it. So like if you're going to hold on to these. I don't feel these, like you would rip these very easy. I don't think you'd rip them. I don't think they're going to slip out of your hands. And what's really great is not only is the gamut of Final Fantasy games represented here. So you're seeing stuff all throughout the series. But the various styles of artwork. I mean, we've got like a, a cartoonish anime art. You've also got these and lovely. some chibi looking things. Yeah, aren't they Look cute? Look at their little princess chick. And then even like the newer games being represented here, these are really, really cool. Look, this one's shiny. It's just a great way to have like a bunch of little uh, art pieces that don't take up a whole lot of space in case you happen to be insane collectors who have little wall space. I really like how those feel. So you just want more to feel more yeah. cards and just like shuffle them. It's a good sensory thing. <laughs> now, one of the last things we got this we, was kind of a surprise. We we met Batman. We did meet Batman. And, and Batman had a bag. And he was giving out Batman. And he was giving out baby Batmans. <laughs> <laughs> so we got tiny Batman from Big Batman. And someone loves her action figures I anyway. Do. So what more perfect gift could you I have know. gotten from Batman? It was awesome. I mean, you know, it might have been a little cooler to like run into Bruce Wayne or something, but Batman's still pretty cool, you guys. <laughs> And last but certainly not least were the press badges that they hooked us up with. Thank you so much, Tremendicon, for putting on an amazing, an amazing show for inviting out some truly incredible and talented people to represent you guys and all of your creative focus. Mm -hmm. There was so much to do. It was so hard to try and squeeze everything even into a three-day convention. I don't know how you guys did it. I yeah. feel like we couldn't even keep up. <laughs> so I can't imagine what you guys were going through. But it was a great show, and it's truly an honor that you guys had us there. We hope that we did you justice yes. by showing off what a great time we had and talking to all of these awesome I mean, awesome our people. old con friends, making new con friends, meeting new people. We had such amazing conversations all weekend long. We just had a blast, and thank you so much for having us. We loved it, and we highly, highly recommend if you're in our area next year for when Tremendicon is going on, go check out Tremendicon. It is awesome. And absolutely support your local conventions. Help yes. them grow. This was their sophomore year. I think that they had some hurdles to jump over, but with your guys' support, conventions like this we'll get them will only those. grow. They'll only become more incredible, and you're going to see some really awesome creators represented there. And you know, speaking of, if you don't mind, I'm going to start uh, on this Oz book here, and you got to have some good, like, reading treats. So, do, do you want to check out your comic? Or? I think I'm going to check out my comics. I'm just surprised that he's going to go read a comic and not play Zelda. Bye, nerdlings. Bye-bye, nerdlings. All right, well. Oh, wait. If we like it. We we nerd it. For comics. For comics. And, and plushies. And, and candy. Candy and making things. Making your own master sword. Oh, bye, nerdlings. Are you ready? Do. Yep. I could have lost a <laughs> finger. <laughs> I think I see a little backpack that we could get Sega head. It's pink. It's favorite. Oh, it's his favorite word too. Look, Sega, it's for you. 
Tremendicon. This is an amazing. <laughs> it was all over yes. <laughs> That's what I say every day at work. Oh, that, but then hit Pop Princess? Yeah. Okay. Pop Warrior? That too. Her too. Her sister. Pop Princess. Pop. I win. What did I win? <laughs> Another beer. Oh, goody. Chris, I'm going to go read about this Gothic cat trick. 